Stage four is the longest stage of all. Learners should take on all the responsibilities that go with driving, just like they are driving on their own, but still with a supervisor sitting next to them to help out if needed. In stage four, learners will practice driving with passengers in the back seat and with distractions such as music and conversation. Learners should also get plenty of experience driving at night and in the wet. Uh, in stage four, I just let him do his own thing, but I was still the supervisor. I still pulled him up if he started doing things wrong, like going too fast, especially around corners, uh, not braking early enough, or not responding quickly enough to things that are happening on the road. We drive with music in the car and with a couple of our friends in the back seat, but mostly in quiet streets at first. Now, I thought it was better for her to get experience driving with distractions while I was in the car, rather than when she was out on her own. Toward the end of stage four, she was driving me everywhere. I thought, I could get pretty used to this. Yes, yeah, stage four was the best, because I got to choose where we go and how, which Dad wasn't too happy about. Dad's really old fashioned, he takes the same roads every day. But it meant I got to navigate and I got to choose where we go. So we got to do it my way. We checked a logbook and we realised we need to get more experienced in different driving conditions. So we drove up the Hume Highway a few times and took exits through the small towns and we found some unsealed roads too. It was important for her to learn that sometimes it's best to drive below the speed limit. Uh, she had to judge the appropriate speed for the weather, for the road surface and to look out for animals such as kangaroos and that was an important lesson. And down to Melbourne, drove around the inner city, it's a real eye opener for him. Yeah, city drivers are crazy. Like, even though you're not going that fast, there's all these cars zipping in and out of traffic and I'd leave a good space and they'd squeeze into it. Hook turns were so stressful. I'm just glad that someone else in the car, like Dad, um, explaining to me what to do. Jackie was in charge for this period and that meant finding car parking spots. And Mum wouldn't help at all. I had no idea it was so hard to find a car park. And she was just like, you're the driver, you make the decision. I reckon they start picking up a few bad habits at this stage. Tim started edging past the stop line at traffic lights a few times, so I had a go at him. You've, you've got to stop that kind of thing there and then. Overconfidence, definitely. If I said something to her, she'd go, Mom, I know how to drive. It's true, she had the basics and she was getting pretty good. But she still had room to improve. And I think the worst thing I could have done was encourage that overconfidence. I didn't want to tell her that she was ready when she clearly wasn't. There's a certain overexcitement once they approach test time. Lou turns 18 soon and she's impatient to finish her 120 hours as quickly as possible. But I think there's a danger in rushing the process. The information and practice is less likely to sink in. If I don't think she's ready, I won't be letting her sit the test. I think I was more stressed about the test than she was. I mean, if she failed, I knew she'd crack it at me. But Mum, it's all your fault. Because I took her driving more than her dad did. I booked a couple of lessons with an instructor. The instructor was pretty cool. Like, I'm glad I got to do the lessons with him before the test, because we practiced some of the things we'd be tested on, and yeah, he, he really helped my nerves, especially on test day. In light and heavy traffic, learners should be able to keep a safe distance from other vehicles, handle complex tasks, merge on freeways, reverse from driveways, parallel park, change lanes in traffic, hook turn, handle unexpected situations, drive on a variety of roads, make safe decisions, use the car for everyday transport, and manage distractions. Learners should be able to do all these things safely and consistently before they attempt the licence test. If you need to keep reminding them to look out for hazards, to brake or to watch their speed, then they are not ready. Just a final point about stage four. Turning 18 doesn't necessarily mean they are ready to drive on their own. They need to be safe to drive without you in the car and they need to be able to handle day-to-day -day driving in all conditions. If you're unsure, consider using a driving instructor to check your learner is ready to start driving on their own before sitting the test. The most common reasons for failing the drive test are speeding and not giving way. Traveling too slow, not looking and not indicating are also common problems. 
Plus, if learners don't get their 120 hours in a broad range of conditions, they will struggle to pass the hazard perception test. There are no shortcuts to being a safe driver. 